Hello, I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough, and welcome back to another episode of Doctor Who Wednesdays. And, unlike a lot of my other toy or merchandise review I've done before, this one's actually going to be scripted. Doctor Who has had a bunch of different merchandise, more than Ed, Ed, and Eddie, obviously, and has had a longer lifespan in terms of merchandise than MLP. Ever since the old Who series, there have been a bunch of different action figures, figurines, and models that have been collected by dedicated who historians. But since I'm a lot younger and more into the new Who, I'm going to be looking at more recently made merchandise from the newer generations. You name it, it's out there. T-shirts, hoodies, posters, bobbleheads, lunchboxes, book bags, mugs, pajama footies, flesh goo pods, Mr. Potato Head models that are... Some even go to like $80. Why? 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 And I especially see a lot of this stuff when I go out shopping. And I'm not just talking con shopping, by the way. In fact, honestly, I have rarely seen Doctor Who stuff at the conventions I've gone to. The one exception being the TARDIS they had at RetroCon. No, most Doctor Who merch I've seen was either at Hot Topic, FYE, Barnes & Nobles, and places like that. Places that generally sell geek stuff. So remember years back when I did the Minecraft March reviews? Does anyone want me to continue that next March, like, unironically? Because if so, I just might do it. Anyway, the point is, when I was doing the Minecraft merch review, there was tons of Doctor Who stuff back there right next to it. Oh, how the times have changed. Nowadays, when I went to FYE, they only had two Doctor Who things in the back. That's mainly because they're trying to make more room for stuff like... It hurts! It actually physically hurts me! Certain merch FYE had back in the day, next to all the TARDIS stuff, were these plushy Daleks, which look pretty cute, all these squishy adipose rubber toys, which seem pretty mixed in reception, but a lot of the stuff they had was TARDIS based. Seriously, you can make a TARDIS into anything. Cups, mugs, shirts, dresses, scarves, hats, cookie jars, soap dispensers, lamps, floating TARDIS magnet thing. The only piece of Doctor Who clothing I got back then was this TARDIS snapback and this one t-shirt, which I really liked the aesthetic of. It was also at the time I got this Minecraft shirt and this creeper beanie for the Minecraft reviews. If you're curious where I got this shirt from, I got it at my local Hot Topic. As a side note, you want to know a really good place to get Doctor Who merch? There's a little gift shop right after you exit the Terminator ride at Universal Orlando. They had tons of cool science fiction stuff there, and Doctor Who was part of it. They had almost everything. I did get a TARDIS beanie there, but I think I may have lost it, and I'm still looking for it to see if I can find it. Future Wiz, where did you lose it? Wiz, I told you, I didn't lose it, alright? Just keep looking for it. Other stuff I got during those days was this TARDIS Nightlight add-on and personalized sonic screwdrivers. Brought to us by Ripple Junction, a company well known for pop culture merch, the Sonic Screwdriver randomizers give you the ability to not only put the Sonic Screwdriver at your fingertips, but also give you the ability to customize it. The models themselves look pretty good, though some of the parts really don't fit that well. Maybe if you keep using them too much they start losing a lot of their strength, but eh, whatever. All in all, good concept and decent payload delivery. I really like the way you can customize these things. On to the TARDIS Nightlight add-on, it's also okay. Made by another pop culture company, Rabbit Tanaka, the same company responsible for TARDIS Christmas lights and a TARDIS lamp, just to name a few, you can slide this mini TARDIS lampshade onto a nightlight. Part of me wishes that there was a fourth wall that you could put on so you have a little complete mini TARDIS. But then again, one quick Amazon or eBay search and it'll show you that there's millions of other tiny TARDIS stuff you can use to decorate your room. The only kind of light you're able to get with this thing is it goes through the windows. Hey, kind of like the show. Some may call these kind of light products tacky, which I could definitely see, but eh, it's harmless at the very least. The detail on the TARDIS model is easily the best thing about it, especially the wood finish they tried to go with in the plastic. So while trying to find some last minute stuff for this review, I hit many, many dead ends. Barnes & Noble only had books and like some new model sonic screwdrivers, FYE had almost nothing, and Hot Topic really didn't have anything either. One was a lava lamp, and the other was this boy. Funko and Playmobil's 11th Doctor collectible figure. Collect them all! Yeah, all two of them. Yes, let's just get the elephant out of the room. This is Funko. The pop vinyl guys. That Funko. I don't hate these things, I really don't, but ever since fake geek culture got popular with crap like Big Bang Theory, they have just become so popular, and you can never escape them. But hey, I'm not a cynic. I actually have one or two pop vinyls lying around my room somewhere, and thankfully this is actually a co-produced product made by Playmobil. 
Play Mobile is a German company similar to Lego, well known for its customizable characters and buildable playsets. Note the hands, very similar to Lego character models. Adjust the arms like this. This one, no, this one does move. But this one feels a little bit looser than this one. I don't know why that is. The one thing I like about Lego over Playmobil are the legs. Look at how stiff these things are. Obviously, Playmobil and their design, like Lego's obviously designed to have its legs move, but yeah, the only thing that moves are the arms and the torso just slightly bends. All right, the head doesn't move, the arms move, but they're pretty stiff with the joints. I like that they made this a little separate model. It looks really good. They put a lot of detail into the sonic screwdriver. Gotta place it very firmly in the hand. Firmly grasp it! Because if it isn't, then it's gonna fall out. Uh, yeah, see, like right there. The plastic they used is fine. I like that they used a different kind of mold uh, for the hair specifically to make it look like Matt Smith's. Other than that, the model uses the exact same type for all of the pieces of the body, and the, the clothes are even the same model. Uh, I like that they gave the little uh, lapel an indent into the plastic mold. That's actually pretty good. In fact, you know what the design of this thing kind of reminds me of? It reminds me of one of those animations that you'd see on YouTube back in 2010. Sex, 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 poopy, poop. The little details I personally like about this figure are the hair, the costume, the sonic screwdriver, and that's about it. Overall, the design is cute, and it's a pretty good figure, but one thing that just always will bug me about these kind of figures are how stiff the joints are, especially with the legs. I mean, my god, even Minecraft Steve had more fluent motion. Eh, still has more fluent motion than Ninja or Robot Defender. While the design is cute, it's not particularly memorable, but compared to other things I've gotten at FYE for these videos, I have seen far worse. Get out of here, you glorified recolors! Okay, one more product. Dalek Desk Toy by Penplax, a company that usually deals with aquarium-related items. Alright, so this is just a day after I uploaded the uh, Time Clash review, so this is gonna be a little bit like a first impressions kind of thing. And oh wow, already, already the thing broke. That's great. The eye thing is already dented. This thing has a giant dent in it. That's, oh, that's fantastic. Uh, you know, usually I would be worried about this kind of thing. Like, don't, don't use the scissors on the new item. But you know what? Clearly it's already broken, so who cares? So one of the reasons that I wanted to talk about it is because, one, I kept seeing it pop up a lot under Doctor Who merch when I was looking up stuff on eBay and Amazon. And uh, another reason is because uh, I hear that it's pretty bad. Like, when I went on Amazon, it had a... Uh, a one out of five star rating, so already that was a that was a winner. And I remember one person's review I saw said that uh, when they first got it, the parts are bent. Enough complaining. Time to say some nice things about it right off the cuff. Uh, the plastic mold they got's pretty good. The way it feels, it feels like it's made out of like some kind of ceramic. Like especially this bottom part right here. Like this feels like it's made from like the same pieces that like a garden gnome is probably made from. I just straightened this thing out. These things are so easily bendable, you could break them. This is bent, so I have to bend it back into place. And this thing, look at that, it just arrived and it has a crack in the arm. This clearly can't be just like the Postal Service's fault because if someone else's reviews got the exact same thing, part of me believes that this is just like really terrible shipment on the company that made its part. All in all, good design work, uh, good craftsmanship. They really did make it look like a Dalek and I like the, the molding techniques that they used to, to make that. But the one complaint that I was so worried about and needless to say, yeah, it happened on mine, is that parts do look broken. There are parts that look like they're about ready to snap off. And that's, this is a new product, all right? This, I mean, it's less than $10, but still, that, that is a genuine complaint. Well, Dalek sent you a brand new toy and you look like you're just about ready to break. Just because of that, you have earned a spot on the shelf of the worst. Uh, give my condolences to other friends like, uh, Ninja and, uh, Robot Defender and the, the MLP recolors over here. Have fun, Dalek. Next time we look at Doctor Who video games. I'm the Media Wiz, because one art form wasn't enough.